Hello, bonjour, Alberta. Did you know that at least 238,000 people speak Francais in Alberta? And those numbers just keep on growing? Oui, oui, c'est vrai, it's true. And thanks to Shaw TV Community Access Programming, we get to reach out to everyone to let you know all about special people, places, events, and activities happening right here in this great province in both English and en français. That's right, mes amis. We begin the first part of our program in English, and then we repeat it en français. So stay with us. Restez à l'écoute. Hello, bonjour Alberta. Thank you for being with us today. Today, I am chatting, Anne Boiteau, I am chatting with Richard Putmans, mm -hmm. who is our councillor, city councillor for Ward Number 6. Right. Welcome, Richard. Well, thank you, Anne. Pleasure to be here. So, Richard, we'll start with a little bit of background, where you're from, and if you're not from Calgary, what brought you to Calgary? I'm from Ottawa originally. Um, lived in Toronto and Montreal, but grew up in Ottawa mainly. I went to the University of Ottawa and Carleton University. And the day I handed in my honors thesis, my father gave me a one-way ticket to Calgary <laughs> as my graduation present. I was a little hurt, but the explanation was he really felt strongly that I should be in Calgary and be in business. Uh, he'd been in government and felt that I was probably a more likely candidate, not so much for government, but in fact in the business world. So and here you are and here I am working as a politician <laughs> working for the city of Calgary in my residence and so I, I find myself wondering what my father would think but I did spend the first 25 years here in business so hopefully he'll be happy oh, good and once you came here you liked it never went back actually I did been here in the, the summer of 78 to work seismic and the, the town was booming there were cranes everywhere and there was so much energy and so much excitement so I, I was disposed of coming back anyway I think and um, yeah so I came back in 79 after graduating and been here ever since ah. and you ended up a politician yeah. how did that happen well I um, was working in economic development for about five or six years and um, an opportunity came up in Ward 6 uh, that the incumbent councillor at the time was going to run for mayor so he and a number of friends actually in the ward suggested that I should consider running I'd been working with the mayor, Dave Brancagne, um, traveling the world, promoting the city. And I thought, well, um, if I don't run, who else? I thought, I, I thought I'd, some of the things I'd done in business, I'd done it, worked in business revitalization zones, I'd worked in economic development, knew the city a little bit, and was very happy to be a representative for the city and encouraging businesses to come here. I thought, well, maybe I should serve the city from a council perspective. So 10 of us ran that year in 2010. and. Um, I was surprised to win, um, thrilled, but uh, there were some great candidates and I was selected. I was, so um, now I'm in my second term. Uh, and you were saying earlier um, that you met your wife here. Yes. And in, tell us a little bit about that. In 1980, working on a political, political campaign. She was the campaign uh -huh. manager and uh, we started working together. To this day, 35 years later, she says, okay, now, dear, we should be doing this and this and this. I said, we're not playing campaign manager, are we, dear? She said, yeah, a little bit. And I said, that was 35 years ago. We can't <laughs> keep playing campaign manager. But um, she had run herself as a candidate and uh, has been very supportive of my interest in politics. But I really had worked on many campaigns and never really contemplated running for office or being a very active politician in a political party. One of the interesting parts to municipal politics is that it is not a partisan political field. Um, a lot of the work we do mm -hmm. um, is not necessarily driven by political ideology, as we like to say, pothole. Not in this province. Not in, uh, that's true, good mm -hmm. point. A lot, of yes. city, a lot of cities in Western Canada and, and, and throughout, the, in fact, North America, the municipal level has been become quite politicized. But here we like to say potholes are agnostic. We don't really have to, they don't really care what the philosophy is, they just need to be fixed. Yes. So it's a problem solving job. We, we deal with development applications that are sometimes very challenging with a lot of contentious issues. Uh, so it's our job to try and figure out the solutions for everybody, listen carefully to our residents, and really try and develop the best answers. Mm -hmm. 
So you have uh, city priorities and you also have ward priorities. Well, they're, they're competing right. priorities. Um, there's some statutes that declare my, my fiduciary duty is to the corporation, but the political reality and the day-to-day -day reality is the residents are the people that voted me in. So my, I think virtually everybody on council feels a primary loyalty to their residents. Mm. And do they often conflict sometimes they do other? sometimes they do and sometimes the lawyers chime in and say you know you've got to be acting in this way or that way it it's one of the reasons we're hiring an integrity commissioner at city hall um, hopefully in place early next year that is going to help guide us on some of the decisions we make because sometimes the interest of the city versus the interest of a ward the interest of a ward within the city itself the community can be uh, not always coincident they don't always look the same so we've spent a lot of our time trying to figure out what the best solution is to satisfy as many of the stakeholders as possible. You know, a large, you know, a gravel pit in one area of the town is necessary to serve the needs of the community, but perhaps the people immediately adjacent to the gravel pit mm -hmm. aren't exactly happy about that. What can you do to try and make sure that all uses that are necessary in a city work together? And that's actually the, the most interesting part of the job because it, it's creative and it lends yes. itself to problem solving. Okay. And what are your priorities for Ward 6? Well, first of all, listening every day, we get a large number of people calling in every day, and we, we have now three staff helping me answer those calls and respond. So I listen carefully to those calls and figure out what the priorities are for our residents. So right now, um, congestion used to be the, the primary concern. Mm -hmm. Now it's actually community safety. And we've wow. had several communities now experiencing a spike in crime rates, typically break-ins and we've called the police in for community meetings and fentanyl turns out to be the drug that's driving a lot of this those people get addicted they have this unfortunate craving need and they, they're feeding their habits by stealing whatever they can get their hands on so it's an interesting problem for the community that becomes more vigilant um, some people are very concerned they're not feeling as safe in their homes as they'd like to the police say yes we can put more patrols on the street we can put undercover people on the street but on the other hand, they also want to be working at the supply end as well, doing the sort of work they do there. So it's an interesting challenge in terms of how do we best address problems like that. The ring road and is another big issue for us. Oh, Sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I that's, was going to ask yeah. because of the, the uh, increased crime rate, do you think that the C train had anything to um, do with that? Data or? and statistics say no. no? Um, it, a criminal is not likely to sort of go in and steal a bunch of things and then sort of jump on a train where no. if anybody right. spots him or recognizes him, he'd become trapped. So we've been through this. We've doubled and tripled the uh, peace officer um, corps that, that patrol the uh, LRT trains, especially at night, and a lot of them undercover as well. So the complaint, since they've done that, the complaints have gone down to be very, oh. very low. We know that the police are on the lookout for that type of activity, but I do not think the C train has led to that spike in crime. Put it this way, it opened in December of 2012. This is now 15 and we're seeing a spike, so it did not oh, happen at the same time. this year it, you're seeing Correct, exactly. Ah. So maybe more the economy. That a little bit the economy. There's some sense that as some of the uh, workforce that has been laid off from Fort McMurray has arrived in Calgary a little bit desperate and looking for what they can do. And some of them are turning to crime is one of the exclamations the police service is offering us. Uh, and uh, so as a city of Calgary, what are some of the priorities at that level? Priorities, the, the key ones right now are affordable housing. And we're with the, working closely with the federal government and the provincial government. We still have an affordable housing crisis. Uh, we have a lot of our affordable stock is, is in, in need of repair and it needs to be replaced. There are no budgets are programmed for that. General infrastructure, traffic infrastructure, congestion is still a, a top three problem. Um, LRT lines um, and then also water treatment plants. So the, the the sort of invisible things, but cost hundreds of millions of dollars. So in order to maintain our standard of living, we need high quality water, and we need to also treat our water appropriately as well. We actually just received an international award as the world's cleanest city, not because we have a lack of graffiti or less litter, but in fact because we have some of the highest quality water treatment in the world, and we're very proud of that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, That's I great. wish we, we, we need to talk I about know, these things more. We, we invest a lot into our quality of life, and we really yes. have to think about that sometimes. But so there, those are some of the key problems we face. Ah, and you seem to have adjusted marvelously to this job. 
Well, uh, it took me a few years. Frankly, the first term, there were a lot of 80-hour work weeks and a lot of problems, which, quite candidly, I'm not sure I came up with the best solutions and ideas. This is, there's no textbook for this. You, you, every day is a, a new exciting opportunity because you don't know what's going to be landed on your plate. But um, after five years, I'm beginning to feel as if uh, I can understand where my value add is, the sorts of things I have to do to really serve the citizens of Ward 6. And how often do you meet as a council? We meet twice a month, and then we have council committees. So most of us serve on four, five, or six, or more committees. Wow. I, I serve on ten. I chair the ten audit committee. Committees? Yeah, some of them only meet every month or two, so we okay. don't meet every week by any means. But there's between 200 and 2,000 pages of material to read a week. And um, it's demanding, but incredibly interesting. Yes. But the best part is actually getting out into the community. And that's so where we can hear people. Quite we a bit. Try to get it about three to five, six nights a week. Wow. You have to have a very, very supportive partner in this job. Yes, eh? <laughs> so, very supportive uh, family. That Absolutely. You have. Absolutely. And, uh, and where do you go from here? Home to bed. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, is there any thought of uh, going uh, on a provincial level, maybe? You know, after or? a federal election, after a provincial election, I don't think there's a municipal politician in the country that periodically doesn't think of that. Um, I think I've got the world's greatest job right now. Um, I grew up in Ottawa, as I mentioned earlier, and I've certainly spent time in Edmonton and familiar with the legislature there and the processes and the government. Um, I'm very happy working with an outstanding administration that we have in downtown Calgary, uh, a great council, uh, the world's best mayor, and really we have an opportunity to help shape our city. And more than a few observers have said around the world, cities are where it's at. Yes, this is definitely. where people come for opportunities. This is where they come to develop creative new business ideas and invent new things. It's not to say that doesn't happen in other areas, but cities are increasingly the focus of economic activity. I love economic development. I like inspiring economic growth and, and more affluence, frankly, for the city and enable us to look after everybody. I think it's only from a, a, a strong financial base that you can make sure that no one gets left behind. Yes. So we're in a very enviable position, even during this downturn, of being able to care for people and create a really terrific city to live and work in. Yes, and still a young enough city that we don't have uh, uh, compared to some eastern cities, the infrastructure problems to the same uh, extent that they uh, do. Absolutely. A fantastic point. Two levels. We are young also. It seems for the past decade the average age in this city has been 37 years old. It, I think a lot of the older people move away somewhere else and we still get fresh graduates from around the world coming here so we've maintained a very young population but you're so right about our infrastructure in Quebec and Ontario. Their bridges are crumbling and they've got multi-billion dollar programs to fix that. We're putting our multi-billion dollar infrastructure programs into actually building new roads yes. and making sure we are putting money aside for what they call life cycle investment. But that's our problem is keeping up with growth. Yes, that's Which a is a fortunate problem to have. Yes, absolutely. Um, I was going to say, you spoke a little bit about the Ring Road, right? Yes. That was so good for this city. One of the best projects, I guess. Uh, well, the last pieces the still have to be up. built. And so the Southwest Ring Road has been tendered, and we're in negotiations with the province for solutions for the West Ring Road. We didn't quite get the news we wanted out of the budget update a few weeks ago. So we've been after the Minister and Alberta Transportation for clarity on what the scheduling might look like for the West Ring Road, which is essentially through Ward 6. Thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. It was Thank you. very nice chatting with you. For all of you out there, please stay with us. We continue en français.